don't do that, chums, as I, Captain Steve. And yes, this is Cartographers. Revisited expeditions, and yet we're doing phase five. This is the last episode, but I might be bringing out my top tips for doing this sort of expedition. So I'm in the station, and I'm just hitting up the expansion slot for my exosuit. Heck yes, just having a quick nose around. I may as well put in the storage upgrades to my actual ship, and maybe for my um, multi-tool as well, just to free up some slots inside of my inventory space in my exosuit but not only that it's going to give me an additional slot inside my ship so if i do shoot the planet at any stage which i'm going to do in this episode yes i hopefully get a load of ferrite dust and other commodities and basic sort of building materials so yeah let's head on over let's see what multi-tools in the cabinet anyway oh that's quite a nice one i like the razor blade like front mm, it's only yeah it's not that great right awesome let's just go and stick in the extra slot inside of my multi-tool i guess let's plug that into there Chicka boom and done. Heck yes. Awesome. Now I think we're set off to go on our adventure. Now I could go around and pick up a load of, um, you know, navigational data if I wanted, but I've got like 45 of the things on me because I found them all over the planet's surface. So yeah, let's just jump in my ship and let's fly on out to the rendezvous point. So yeah, rendezvous one is actually in the starting system. It's on the lava planet in the system. So we've actually highlighted it and it says there, you know, locate it in this actual system. So it doesn't say jump into space and warp. No. No, don't have to do that. Yeah, because at the moment we can't warp. Because our warp engines are not fixed-decated. We need to get larval cores. We need the ionised cobalt and gravitino bolts. So here I am at rendezvous one on this horrible, evil planet that's got raging sentinels on here. Because it's got gravitino balls in the wild, so we'll go pick some of those. But yeah, I just wanted to show you what I unlocked inside of this archive. Because it's like a little mini-adventure game. You know, like the ones where it's turn 10 to page 6 or whatever. So yeah, here we go. It says here that the polywogs have actually escaped the spawning pools. What are you going to do? Yeah, so you can either go left, or you can go right, or you can transcend space-time. Obviously, I'm going to do that, because that's something Doctor Who would do. So yeah, let's transcend space and time. Yeah, and uh, then, yeah, 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 game over. Infinite sadness. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite sadness. Nice. I don't think I, that would be my nemesis. I like to stay perpetually happy if I can. Yes, cut out all that as well negativity from the world. Right, okay, I tried the next one. Game over again. Right, we've got one choice left. We're going to go right. Yes, yeah, so it did. <sighs> It's on the freaking tin, isn't it? Go right. It's the right one. <laughs> Boom. Yes, and we're, we're triumphant. We got one as a pet. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, nice. I, I'm, I'm fairly sure that the Gek spawning pause is like Baby Gek. So we just got a Baby Gek as a, as a pet? Can we hit it with a hammer? Is that allowed? Right. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I just did. Right, let's get inside of our ship and let's head on out. Yeah, I'm not going to leave this planet yet, though. No. I'm going to stay in the atmosphere and I'm going to shoot the heck out of the actual surface to get a shed load of ferrite dust. Yes, because why the heck not? So if you are going to be transferring this safe to normal save, I would suggest it to have the best start. Get a load of resources by shooting every single planet that you leave. It's going to give you all the best, all the base elements, not best, base elements. So ferrite dust, carbon, you're going to get a load of um, that blue stuff, the dehydrogen. You can get all sorts just from shooting the planet. You even get oxygen if you shoot some hazardous flora. So brilliant. Lovely jubbly. Awesome. It's better with a positron ejector than the actual weapon I'm using. But the weapon I'm using, if I just keep randomly pressing, it doesn't actually overheat. So you can obliterate the planet and get loads of resources. Lovely. Now, I'm using those resources to craft myself a load of freaking you know, warp fuel. So perfect. However, my warp engine is bust because I still need the larval cores. But I also need gravity balls. This planet littered with gravity balls. So if you've done what I did and accidentally sold your gravity balls or dump them because you needed other resources, just go and pick some up on this planet. It is going to trigger the sentinels, though. It's going to trigger the sentinels, so just be a bit mindful of that. But yeah, as long as your ship's in close proximity to the actual gravitina balls, you should be fine. Just get in your ship and just hover away. And after a while, the sentinels will lose interest and the heat will go off. Awesome. If you end up with a free star like I end up with, just like I've got now, you can actually fly your ship up out of the atmosphere and back down again. It drops it back down to a one and that decreases the timer. Just as a little heads up. Right, let's go grab all of these. Brilliant. 
lovely jubby. So when you fly up through the atmosphere, as soon as you start seeing asteroids, you'll see it drop to a one star, and the Sentinel will start beaming in. As soon as it starts beaming in, fly back down, and then yeah, you get rid of the Sentinel heat a bit quicker. But it, it it's just for the impatient out there. To be fair, just getting in your ship and just floating around for a while, it, it's, it's not a hardship. It really isn't. Righto, so here we go. I'm just going to take off, and we'll just get rid of the Sentinel heat. Boom, there we go. And let's just fly for a while. You see that it's like got 20 odd seconds or so. But why it's doing that, let's fix all this up. So I'm going to stick the gravity no balls in there. Saves me freaking going and spending them or, or giving them away or whatever. And now I just need the larval cores. So why we're trying to get rid of the sentinel heat, I'm going to pop some of my maps and hopefully hit up an abandoned building. So if I go for the settlements or structures or homes or whatever they are, which aren't on this screen, no. I've got some planetary charts, but they just hit up randoms. Right, so it's my red ones. Oh, there they are. They're down towards the bottom near to that movement module. So we go. There, there they are. There you go. Let's just pop one. Let's, oh, no, can't, can't use it. Now, there's quite a lot already marked out, so there's a good chance I'm not going to come across an abandoned building. Right, okay, if it doesn't, then what I might do is, because there's quite a lot of markers on this planet, I might fly to one of the planets that's not so busy in this system, because the little gamma planet isn't all that busy at the moment, and all I'm going to do is just lock on to maybe the compass direction, and keep flying in a northerly direction or southerly direction, and just keep using my scanner every now and again. Abandoned buildings are quite commonplace, you're going to come across them, and they're easy to tell, because as you fly over the building, you see the eggs around the outskirts of them. So yeah, I'm not having no luck using my planetary charts, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fly over to one of the smaller planets in the system. The smaller the planet, the more condensed all the structures and buildings are going to be. It seems to be that they've got a certain quota per planet. The bigger the planet, the more spread out they're going to be. The smaller the planet, the closer condensed they are. So this planet's a medium-sized planet, so I'm just going to fly over. I'm locked onto north, and I'm just going to be flying north, and every now and again, just pop in my scanner, and here we go, I found a building. That one's not an abandoned building, but it was the third one. Third one I come across, bang, it was an abandoned building. Very, very simple to find. I give you the coordinates of exactly where this is on the Gamma Planet um, when I go to take off in a moment. But anyway, let's just hit on up a save, just in case I do die. These creatures can teleport like freaking Goku. Transinstant location, boom! And then they headbutt you and they can catapult you into space, which isn't ideal. And now, a lot of people like to build bases at these. Please don't. If you build a base, people can't actually use the terrain manipulator. And the terrain manipulator is essential to getting these eggs without becoming a cropper to the freaking evil, gitty, green guys that appear when you blast the eggs. So what you do is you use the terrain manipulator and you just dig underneath the actual eggs. So yeah, if you are going to build anywhere near to one of these, make sure it's on the outskirts of the actual building. Just don't build near them. It's probably best. Just don't build near these buildings because it, it stops people from doing this method. Now, this method is super slick and easy. Um, yeah, otherwise, I suppose the other way you could do it is call in your exomech, pop the egg, grab the grab the actual um, core, and get into your exomech and just stand there, or just get in your spaceship and just wait for the swarm to subside and then go get the next one. But it's going to take you a heck of a lot of time. And if they do bite you, because you haven't got many shields at this stage of play, you're not going to last long. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit risky, this. But all you do is dig underneath, and make it so they can sort of bounce down and get to you, and then just use your, your uh, mining blazer to blast them. They should roll down and come to you. There you go. So there we are. Hopefully they're all just going to fall into this nice little recess that I've got down here. One or two might get stuck, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Okay, there we go. It's raining eggs. It's raining eggs. Hallelujah. It's raining lava cores. Yeah, they've got one there. Brilliant. Okay, now you can see them all scuttering about, but they don't come in the hole. Aliens don't go into caves. They just sort of sit on the outskirts. You might get one drop down, but it won't pay any attention to you. It's more interesting than getting back out the hole. So, yeah, there we go. I've got another egg. Lovely. Oh, look, there's one. You see what I mean? He's just stuck there, going, Oh, I want to get out of this hole. I want to get out of this hole. I'm in the hole. Help me, I'm in the hole. They come out of the ground. I don't know why they're so panicked about being in a hole. Right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's grab this one. You'd think they'd come straight down after you. Heck, it's a bit weird. Anyway, we've got our larval cores. Now we can fix the ship, but the ship is too far away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to risk it. I'm not going to wait for them to subside, which I should. I should. I should have been more patient. I'm just going to fly out. Danger, Steve. Here I go. Straight over to my ship. You're hoping I get killed, aren't you? No, I don't think I don't get killed. But I'm going to take off, and I'm going to pop you up the coordinates of exactly where this was on my screen. So here we go. Let's zoom in. So it's around there on this planet, on the gamma world within inside of this system. There we go, people. So if you 
do want to go to that exact same abandoned building please don't put a base there and hopefully other people can use it and use that method because that that land should reheal itself and the eggs should respawn if you put a base there people won't be able to dig down and do that method basically awesome we're good to go we're good to rock and roll Yep, and I can fuel my drive. And now I can warp onto another system. And I think we've already got to go to another rendezvous, and then we're pretty much there. The biggest sort of issue for me, though, is my inventory is getting quite full, so I might not be able to pop all these badges. Brilliant, we've just got a station override. Yeah. Now that, I would suggest keeping and, and moving over to your legacy save, if you've got a legacy save. If this is going to convert to a normal and you're going to carry on playing, keep that station override. Don't try and use it yet, because at the moment it does nothing and it just takes it from you and says that it's a counterfeit. It's not a counterfeit, I would like to hope. I would hope that once that sort of mechanic is added into the game, we can use these station overrides. So don't use it, would be my advice. Right, don't just put it, squirrel it away somewhere on your freighter or somewhere where you're not going to touch it and just remember that it's there. Right, oh, awesome. So, as always, I always touch base on the station, because it adds it to my teleporter list, I can upgrade my exosuit, not that I really need to, because if we were at the penultimate stage, we're just going to the last rendezvous point right now, I can see that there's a base from relatively close proximity to the actual rendezvous point, however, there is a uh, portal there that's quite close to it as well, and as you get closer to the actual rendezvous marker, hopefully you're going to see these comms balls pop because there's a whole freaking field of them around here. Let's have a little walk around as we actually pop our final badge. And let's get some lovely messages from the community. Awesome. Oh, that one's not so nice. There we go, Herox. Lovely. Change the story, change the world. Nice. Oh, I'm going to do, I am going to do a play, a, a video on all my best sort of tips for this. And one of them is going to be how to get Herox using the large refiner. And um, some other tips on how to find the rocks that people left in my comments. So thank you very much, people in the comments. Oh, look, I, I just saw one that mentioned Jason Plays and um, I think Survival Bob. Oh, awesome. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, nice one. Cool, cool. Got all sorts of stuff going on here. I might leave my own comms ball. Yes, I might leave my own comms ball right at the sort of footer of this. Now, I've noticed that everybody's using orange and white ones. Well, my coloration, I like to use red and white because that's like my logo colours, isn't it? So I'd use a red and white one. I'm going to be sticking one down here. Awesome. Lovely, happy holiday messages. I like it. Right, so here we go. Let's put down mine. I'm going to make it red and white, like I say. Boom. Yeah, lovely. Awesome. That's there. And now I'm just going to put in my lovely, lovely Christmas message, which is, yes, I'm going to put Captain Steve Yeah, wishes you a happy 2022. There we go. Nice and simple. Captain Steve wishes you a happy 2022. And I do. I do very honestly mean that. Yeah, everybody that views or watches my videos, thank you very much for doing so in 2022. I am hoping to do a channel news video before the close of 2022 to say a massive great big thank you anyway. But hey, there we go. We can now pop the last couple of badges. Yes, we get a load of nice building parts. Still haven't got those Diplo chunks or uh, the giant eggs, which I was hoping to get in this expedition because I didn't get them in the last one either. People were saying it was either an Expedition 2 or 3 that they got awarded. And you know what? I remember getting given a load of cooking products. And I was like, well, why have I been given these? I'd... And they just filled up my inventory and I just deleted them. And I can't remember what they were, but I know that I got a load of cooking ingredients. And yet in Expedition 2 and 3, we haven't had the cooking ingredients pop. But they did alter things around, didn't they? It's like um, before, to get the Herox ingredients, you just had to touch base at a trading post, which was really easy to do didn't work on this one you had to actually mine the resources on an auto harvester to get those so yeah anyway i've got a load of fireworks here so we're going to let off these fireworks and uh yeah i'm just gonna let the music play and let you enjoy the fireworks display Captain Steve, Captain Steve, Captain, Captain. I 
had to put it in the playlist. I had to get it in there somewhere. Anyway, there we go, people. I hope you enjoyed that little treat for your ear holes out there in the viewerverse. I guess, or the listenerverse, or whatever you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you thought, yeah, Captain Steve's forgotten about his little tune. No, no, I hadn't. I had it in my back pocket all along. Yes. Anyway, people, you've been freaking awesome. Oh, before I go, even though I'm waving right now, yeah, another little tip. Make sure you claim all your rewards. Yeah, hit the big badge on the end of the phase and you're going to get your little creature egg that you can hatch and you can get your own little insane creaturey pet that does pretty much nothing. Actually, he's pretty good at killing other little green horror pets, but they have to hit you first. He's a bit weird. Anyway, until next time, people, all of you have been freaking awesome. Catch you later. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe, and I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers! And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve that little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.